Thanks yeah. everyone and welcome to today's journal club uh, from my APTM, which is the fifth episode in the series. So let us begin the session. I'm Dr. Anjuka Karmani, Junior Consultant in Pediatrics at Vidra Hospital and Joint Coordinator of the Journal Club Toronto. I'll be moderating the session and we'll try to keep time as much as possible. I would like to welcome Dr. Uh, I have a message, Dr. Vijay Kumar sir. Dr. Jordi Sebastian is uh, busy. Dr. Riyazar is in another uh, uh, meeting and I have called Raguni sir and uh, Raguni madam and uh, Sibikurian uh, sir also. They will probably join. I would like to welcome the IP Journal Club coordinator, Dr. Patnav Sir, MRCP, MRCPH, presently working as the senior consultant in Pediatrics Pediatrics Hospital. Then we have our subject expert. Uh, welcome, Dr. Raman Puti Sir, Sir is Emeritus Professor and was Senior Grade Professor in Research Scientist at Achitamina Center for Health Science Studies, Sri Chitra Journal Institute for Medical Sciences and Technology. Sir is a member of the International Epidemiological Association. Sir has began uh, career began as a lecturer in Pediatrics at Medical College Treasur. Sir has uh, supervised PhDs in public health, awarded five. Sir is guiding. Uh, six and uh, uh, guided more than 25 masters in peace dissertations. Welcome, sir. Then I would like to welcome Dr. Uh, uh, probably Lilitha Gales, madam, will also join. And I was the principal of the Sri Gogolam Medical I College. Joined. Lilitha Gales joined. Joined already. Sorry, <laughs> madam. <laughs> madam is a principal of the Sri Gogolam Medical College, Trivandrum. So, madam is a former HOD Pediatrics Society and, of course, uh, the Gogolam Medical College. Also, welcoming Dr. Rekha S. Nair, Associate Professor, Department of Pediatrics at uh, Gogolam Medical College, who has been mentoring the postgraduates and was enthusiastically on the program to get this materialized. Also, welcoming other uh, <clears throat> uh, senior teachers, faculties, colleagues, practicing pediatricians. And uh, also, I would like to welcome Dr. Shamim Farhat and Dr. Shaina Uday Kumar, who is going to present and analyze the article. Today, the topic of discussion is based on an article regarding the use of magnesium sulfate nebulization in bronchitis. As you know, the evidence in the management of bronchitis is always has been a have been a subject subject of interest, and it is always worthwhile to notice and analyze information pertaining to this very common condition. Today's journal club floor is all taken by uh, uh, taken over by the team from Sri Gogol Medical College, Chennai. The presentation of the article is by Dr. Shamim Farhat, junior resident, and the analysis is being done by Dr. Shaina Uday Kumar, junior resident from Sri Gogol Medical College. We have their mentor, Dr. Rekha Snair, on the desk, and also the principal, Dr. Lilitha Kalais, madam. After the presentation and analysis by the PGs, Dr. Ramkuti sir will help us guide through the article to recognize the true worth of it. This will be followed by a focused discussion before we'll conclude. And sir has uh, mentioned that sir has to, Ramkuti sir has to. Uh, probably join another session at 8.30. So we will uh, try to keep time as, as, as far as possible. As we know, APT Toronto Journal Club has been trying to take up and discuss articles which have been academic uh, importance, which are useful for practicing pediatricians, which has practical value, which are recent, which are from index journals of good national and international standards with good quality, and which would be useful while attempting the recent advance of pediatric examination. Now, I would like to uh, request Dr. Uh, Padmanabha sir, the coordinator of the Journal Club, to talk a few words on it, sir. Over to the Prime sir. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, I think you better start the presentation. We will comment about it at the end after okay. the present. Okay. Okay. Because Ramaguti also has to leave early. Okay. Okay. Uh, let the matter. Can we directly go to the presentation, madam? Sure. Yeah, okay. And, and I would like to uh, request Dr. Shamim uh, to uh, present the article first. Over to Dr. Shamim. Good evening, all. Uh, today, I will be presenting about an article came in Indian Journal of Contemporary Pediatrics. Uh, it is about magnesium sulfate nebulizations in acute bronchiolitis in infants. It is a randomized control trial uh, done by Shiva K. Janakwadi et al. Uh, it was published in 2021, uh, June 8th. June. Uh, the primary objectives of this study was uh, improvement in the RDA score and the secondary objective improvement in the SPO2 and of the duration of the hospital stay. Uh, this is the RDA score. Uh, it's a uh, severity assessing score that is respiratory distress assessment instrument. Uh, this takes into consideration about wheezing and retraction. And this is for 0, 1, 2, 3. Next slide, sir. Uh, the methods used in this study are prospective randomized control study. It included 104 patients diagnosed as acute bronchiolitis. It was conducted in pediatric emergency ward, government multi-speciality hospital, Chandigarh, from February 2017 to March 2018. The inclusion criteria are children in the age group of 2 to 12 months admitted with 
acute bronchiolitis as per the american academy of pediatrics 24 guideline 2014 guidelines uh, the exclusion criteria are very sick patients with shock uh, seizures tachycardia and respiratory failure are excluded then presence of any congenital heart disease or congenital malformation uh, in uh, children with sam then pneumonia or pleural effusion foreign body ingestion history of prematurity or mechanical ventilation in newborn period then history of nebulization of any drug in the past or any family history of bronchial asthma or any past history of any bees the method methodology was the patients who were attended in the emergency room was taken for this study a detailed history and physical examination was done including the rdi score assessment a written informed consent was taken and uh, patients were randomly allocated to one of the two groups by using random number table generated on computer by the statistician the group allocation was concealed in opaque envelopes after enrollment an envelope was opened and patient was assigned to that group uh, then the study group was treated with 40 mg per kg magnesium sulfate nebulization diluted with 2 to 3 ml normal saline three doses of the medications were given at one hour interval in the study group and it was not repeated after these three doses the nebulization was given over the 10 to 15 minutes in addition the study group patients received routine treatment as in the control group that is the control group was treated with oxygen therapy by nasal prongs if spo2 was less than 92 percent in iv fluids and symptomatic treatment for fever in case of any deterioration of condition the patient was to be treated as per the standard protocol as nasal cpap the patients were examined by the investigator at the study entry and every day then monitoring parameters for improvement or worsening of the condition were re recorded at admission then after initial three nebulizations followed by six hourly interval on day one and then at 12 hourly intervals till discharge the viral studies of patients were not done the discharge criteria were when the uh, patients were feeding well orally, then absence of any tachypnea, when the RDA score was less than 5 or the oxygen saturation more than 92% in room air. The guidelines of Central Ethical Committee for Biomedical Research and also the Helsinki Declaration was strictly adhered to. The Ethical Committee also has approved this study. The trial was also registered at Clinical Ministry of Health. The number given below. Registration number given below. The sample size justification and statistical analysis. Uh, the sample size was estimated based on a study by conducted by uh, Modrasi et al. Sample size in each group using the RDA difference of one with standard deviation of one point and was estimated to be 47 subjects per group at a it was also uh, decided to include for possible dropouts. So the final uh, subjects was 52 in each group. The estimation sample size estimation was done by using trial size package in our software and the statistical tool you uh, analyze the data was SPS 20. This is the flowchart showing uh, samples where that is after one not four patients were randomized and allocated to each group that is group A which received the magnesium sulfate nebulization and the group B which is the control group. None of the patients were lost to follow up so the final analysis include all one not four patients that is yeah. the results were total 120 patients acute bronchiolitis were assessed for the eligibility uh, 12 cases were excluded as five had congenital heart disease three had diagnosis of sam four were, had past history of bees and four patients refused to participate in the study so a total of 104 patients uh, aged between 2 to 12 months fulfilling the clinical criteria of acute bronchiolitis were enrolled in the study next slide sir. Uh, the mean age in the study group and control group was 5.2 and 4.85. So next slide. Uh, among this, the uh, males in group A account for 69.2% and females 308 
and in group B there were 75 percent males and 25 percent females. The respiratory rate in both groups uh, were nearly comparable. The RDA score was 9.15 in group A and 9.77 in group B. SpO2 was 92.37 plus or minus 1.9. Uh, and 92.10 in group B. Heart rate also were comparable. Next slide. Uh, the RDA score, uh, comparison of RDA score with time, that is at admission, the mean RDA score in group A was 9.15 and in group B it was 9.77. At three hours, uh, six hours, 12 hours and 24 hours it was compared and there was significant difference in group A. Also, the uh, SpO2 was also compared between the two groups at 0 hours, 3 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours and 24 hours as shown in this flowchart. Next slide. Sir. The, uh, among these subjects, uh, those who have RDA score less than 10, in study group it was 31 subjects had RDA score less than 10 and control group 22, whereas uh, those having RDA score more than 10 in study group was 21 and control group was 30. Uh, the baseline RDA score in uh, those groups with baseline RDA score less than 10, the mean plus or minus standard deviation RDA score was significantly lesser in study group as compared to the control group from 3 hours to 24 hours. Also, the oxygen saturation was significantly more in the study group as compared to control group at three hours, six hours and 24 hours. And the duration of hospital stay was significantly lesser in study group. When baseline RDA score is more than or equal to 10, there were no significant difference in RDA score mean between two groups from three hours to 24 hours. Also no significant difference in SpO2 between two groups at three hours, six hours, 12 hours and 24 hours. And no significant difference between two groups in relation to duration of hospital stay. Also, the mean duration of oxygen therapy was comparable between the two groups. There was no dropout and all patients recovered. And also, there was no deterioration in signs and symptoms in any patient in either group. Coming to the discussion part, uh, in this study, we studied the efficacy of magnesium sulfate nebulization in acute bronchiolitis in children aged 2 to 12 months. Uh, the magnesium sulfate nebulization led to better improvement in RDA score and oxygen saturation as compared to control group. But 49% patients of, of patients with baseline RDA score of more than or equal to 10, there was no significant difference of RDA and oxygen saturation between magnesium sulfate study group and the control group. Uh, there was another study by Modrasi et al. Uh, which showed which also showed beneficial effect of magnesium sulfate nebulization in infants with bronchiolitis. In this study, uh, they have given adrenaline and magnesium sulfate nebulization in the study group and only adrenaline in the control group. And they used nebulization fourth hourly after the initial three doses at 20 minute interval. But in this study, uh, we used only three initial doses at one hour interval. Uh, as per uh, NICE and AAP guidelines, they do not recommend adrenaline nebulization in bronchiolitis. There was another study by Koss et al. They used magnesium sulfate nebulization in a randomized controlled trial involving three groups. The group one used inhalation of salbutamol, group two used inhalation of magnesium sulfate, and the group three inhalation of salbutamol plus magnesium sulfate. Uh, the procedure was performed on two occasions at 30 minutes interval. There was improvement in clinical severity score significantly more in salbutamol plus magnesium sulfate group as compared to the magnesium sulfate group. Next. In our study, uh, the mean duration of hospital stay was significantly lesser in the study group as compared to control group in mild to moderate illness and not in severe cases. But in the study by Modrasi et al, uh, the length of hospital stay in magnesium sulfate plus adrenaline nebulization group uh, was 84.3 hours and in only adrenaline nebulization group it was 84.7 hours. In our study there were no adverse effects of magnesium sulfates like nausea, vomiting, apnea, arrhythmia, hypotension, loss of deep tendon reflexes. Uh, there were no side effects in other studies also. Next slide. 
the strength of our study was uh, good sample size and its randomized controlled trial design resulting in good match for signs and symptoms there was no dropout and withdrawal of patients during the study the limitations of our this study was there was no facility for virus studies then other studies have not graded the severity of acute bronchitis while in this study we have graded about uh, graded uh, and only about 50% percent of patients had baseline rda score more than 10 and this being the limitation of this study a larger study is needed to see the effect of magnesium sulfate nebulization in severe bronchitis so on concluding the magnesium sulfate nebulization can be used in infants with acute bronchitis with uh, mild to moderate severity there were no adverse effects of magnesium sulfate like nausea vomiting apnea arrhythmia hypotension or loss of deep tendon reflexes observed in this study uh, the magnesium sulfate nebulization is effective in improving the rdi score and oxygen saturation in acute bronchitis in cases with baseline rdi score less than 10 the mean plus or minus standard deviation rdi score was significantly lesser in study group as compared to control group from 3 hours to 24 hours also the duration of hospital stay was significantly lesser in study group as compared to control group in cases with baseline rdi score less than 10 there were no funding sources for this study uh, no conflict of interest declared thank you okay, thank you for that crisp and excellent presentation now we'll go to the analysis part i would like to request dr uh, uh, shaina uday kumar to present her presentation good evening to all i'm shaina uday kumar pg resident sri gokulam medical college i'll be analyzing the uh, journal uh, presented by dr shami so as i already mentioned the original research article is the magnesium sulfate nebulization in acute bronchiolitis and this is a randomized control trial so what is randomized control trial it is one of the most powerful tools of clinical research they are quantitative comparative controlled experiments in which a group of individuals studies for more intervention in a series of individuals who received them in a random order the rct is provides the fundamentals of evidence based medicine and it is most reliable research design uh, design out of all of the epidemiological studies available in order to avoid the reporting errors and to maintain a standardization we use the concerned guidelines to uh, analyze this uh, uh, randomized control trial so uh, next slide sir Uh, coming to the anal uh, analysis of the uh, article uh, first uh, in the checklist first comes the title and the abstract the title uh, first is the identification as a randomized control trial in our uh, article it is clearly mentioned that this is a randomized control trial next slide sir uh, one b is the structured summary of the trial design methods results and the conclusion which has been clearly mentioned in our Uh, in our um, uh, in our abstract that is which is a prospective open label randomized studies and the results and the conclusion has also been mentioned mentioned in the summary mm -hmm. yeah the extension of counseling on those one notice on the available coming to the introduction the background and the objectives the 2a is the specific background and the explanation of the rational which is clearly mentioned in our slide next is the specific objectives and the hypothesis the objectives are, are in the in our article is mentioned in the outcome format usually the objectives are mentioned in a question format next slide sir uh, coming to the methods and the methods in that first is the trial design the description of the trial design including the allocation ratio has been mentioned in our slide that is a, it is a prospective randomized controlled trial which is an open label study and this is a parallel design a parallel design means that the uh, study the patients has been divided into many arms and the interventions are given to these arms and they are followed up uh, and the patients stay through stay in the same intervention throughout the study next sir 3b that is the important changes to methods after the trial has uh, commenced there is no changes to the methods after the trial has commenced in our study next sir next is the participants the eligibility criteria of the part participants 
the setting and the location where the data was collected was also clearly given in our study. Yes, the interventions. The intervention of each group with sufficient details to allow the replication, including how and when they were actually administered, was given. That is, a, it is clearly given that how the nebulized magnesium sulfate was given in the uh, study group and uh, how often was it given and how it, the monitoring was done was clearly mentioned in the journal. Next. Coming to the outcomes, the completely defined pre-specified primary and secondary outcome measures, including how and when they were assessed, was clear. This was clearly given in our um, in our journal, but there was no changes uh, to the trial outcomes after the trial has been commenced. Next up, coming to the sample size. How the sample size was de uh, determined. The how the sample size was determined uh, was given in the study. Even though the exact formula is not mentioned, the parameters used to uh, uh, used to come to the outcome was given in the uh, journal. And the explain the next is the there was no interim analysis in our study. Next is randomization. That is how the sequence is generated. Method used to generate the sequence was given in our sample, uh, in our study. That is, it was a random number generated uh, by computer. Type of randomization, details of any. There was no blocking and block size was not used in our, uh, in our study. Next is the allocation concealment. Uh, mechanism used to implement the random allocation uh, sequence describing any steps taken to conceal the sequence until the interventions were designed was also given in our study. Now coming to the implementation, who generated a random, that is it was random allocation sequence and who enrolled the participants and who assigned the participants to the intervention was also given in the study. Next slide, sir. So this is the highlighting the points what I, which I have already mentioned that uh, uh, the sequence was generated as a random number table generated on the computer and the allocation was uh, done in a, con was concealed in an opaque envelope. After the enrollment, envelope was opened and the patients was assigned to the group by the resident doctor. Next, sir. Now, blinding. In, uh, if done, who was blinded and after the assignment the, to the interventions? For example, the uh, participants, care providers, and those assessing the outcome and how. There was no blinding. This was an open labeled study. Next slide, sir. Next is the statistical method. The statistical methods used to compare the groups of primary and secondary outcomes and the methods for the ad um, additional analysis such as the subgroup analysis and adjacent analysis. In this that uh, the uh, statistical tool used to measure analyze the data was given. The method would be probably the uh, uh, standard T uh, student t-test method but it has not been clearly mentioned in the uh, journal. Next up. Coming to the results, the participant flowchart flow has been given in the, uh, in, it's been clearly given in the journal. For each group, the number of participants who were randomly assigned received int intended treatment and where the analysis of the primary outcome was uh, clearly mentioned in our, uh, in our study, uh, in our article. Uh, 3B is for each group's losses and exclusion after the randomization towards, together with the reasons. The, there was no, in our study, there was no losses and exclusion after the randomization. Next up. This is the, uh, the pictorial representation of the study, the graph. Next up. Next is recruitment. The dates defining the periods of recruitment and the follow-up was clearly mentioned in the study that is a uh, uh, it was from February 2017 to March 2018 and the, when the uh, there was no, uh, the trial was not stopped abruptly and when the trial ended was also given in the study. Coming to the baseline data, uh, there was a table showing, a table showing the baseline demographic and clinical characteristics for each group. This is the baseline parameters of the patients that were, uh, were uh, in whom the study was conducted both control and uh, study groups based on parameters was given in the study. Next up. Coming to, uh, coming to the numbers analyzed for each group, number of participants included in each group, analysis and whether the analysis was by original assigned group. And this was uh, clearly mentioned in our journal. Coming to the outcomes and the estimation, 
Send DNA for each primary and secondary outcome, the results of each group and the estimated effect size and its precision was given in this uh, it was given in the article, even though the confidence interval of each, each parameters was not mentioned in our article. Uh, yeah, there is no binary outcomes in our article. This was a continuous variable analysis. Next is the ancillary analysis. That is results of any other analysis performed, including the subgroup analysis and adjusted analysis, distribu distributing pre-specified from the exploratory. In our uh, study, the, in the objectives, that is the primary objectives and the secondary objectives was again subdivided into with the RDS score less than 10 and more than 10. And their analysis was given in this study. Next up, arms. After the um, uh, next slide, and this is already explained. So, arms are uh, that is 19. All important, uh, all important harms or unintended effects in each group. There was no harms or unintended effect in our study. Um, I mean, to the discussion part, which is the limitations. Um, that is a uh, trial limitation addressing the source of potential bias in precision and if relevant, the multiplicity of the analysis. In our case, case the limitation of the study was clearly mentioned in the, uh, uh, was clearly mentioned in the study. So, generalized, uh, coming to the generalizability, according to our study, uh, it is said that the, this magnesium sulfate can be used in mild to moderate uh, this, uh, bronchiolitis. Coming to the interpretation, interpretation is consistent with the results, balancing the benefits and harms and considering other relevant evidences. Next is a registration, the registration number and the name of the trial registry has been clearly mentioned in the our study. The pro, uh, next is the protocol. The, there was no full trial protocol that can uh, that was available with our study. Next, uh, next is the funding source. The uh, funding source. Uh, source of funding and other supports. So there was no funding sources in our study. So concluding the study with the consort guidelines, according to the guidelines, the RCT uh, fulfills about a majority of the checklist and this according to the study, max sulfate can be used in a mild to moderate disease, uh, diseases. Thank you. Oh. And that is an excellent presentation, uh, Dr. Shaina. Now, I would like to request Dr. Ramguti sir to share his thoughts on this article as well as the presentations. Ramguti sir. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Very much. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah, I mean, both presentations were uh, good. Uh, and uh, especially the consort guidelines have been followed in the second presentation. Uh, so if, if you read it, it's a fairly straightforward uh, study. It's a open label trial uh, to test the efficacy of uh, magnesium sulfate nebulization, bronchiolitis. But when you read it further, there are certain questions that, and also the way they have written up also, uh, there are minor Uh, if, uh, you know, for instance, uh, if you look at the objectives, uh, of course, they have put objectives. Can can somebody look at the object, can show the objectives, slide showing the objectives, just for one second. Yeah, what they're saying is primary objective is improvement in RDAI score. Do you think that is the objective of this study? I don't think so. The, the study objective is to understand if there is an improvement in RDAI score by administering Magnesium sulfate uh, nebulization, isn't it? I hope you will agree with me. So this is a very kind of a very funny way of putting the objective. So that is uh, something I think uh, I'm, I'm surprised that even the reviewers missed it. The study objective is certainly not improvement in RDI score. It is to understand whether RDI scores improve with nebulization. So that is the objective of the study, isn't it? Sir. So that is one thing. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, randomization has been followed uh, perfectly and uh, all the procedures have been done well. <clears throat> and uh, the next point I would like to ask, and of course, I am not an expert in this. I think the clinicians should answer. Uh, they say that they calculated sample size based on another study. 
So which means there was a study previously and what does it show? Was it effective or not? Because this is very important in a clinical trial. So you cannot go on subjecting people to clinical trials. If there is a definite answer, you should not do a clinical trial. So whether it is good or bad in the, the other study, I don't know. Uh, uh, Mr. Sir, uh, I think uh, Shamim can answer the question. That Modrasi et al. study, what was the conclusion, Dr. Uh, Shamim? Uh, there was improvement uh, uh, in the group in that they used both adrenaline and magnesium sulfate nebulizations. And in the control group, they used only adrenaline nebulization. There was definite improvement in those groups which used adrenaline and magnesium sulfate nebulization. So the therapeutic uh, modality tested slightly different from this, right? So they yes, are sir. yes, sir, that's true. So in which case it is justified. So the, so the point is so, that you know, there should be clinical equipoise if you should justify a clinical trial. There should be a definite doubt about the efficacy of the drug. Otherwise, you are not supposed to do a clinical trial. Either way, even if it is effective or if it is not effective also, yes, uh, you should not do that. So that is very important to remember. Uh, and the next point I wanted to raise was, uh, was purely technical that when you look at the analysis, they have looked at every point, uh, you know, at every point, what is the p-value? Actually, it is not needed. It, uh, you need to do a uh, analysis of uh, the interaction between time and uh, group. And you will find that group is effective and controlling for time, which is good enough. You just need to report only that. But of course, they have gone on to report uh, at each point, how it was different and all that. But uh, it's, it's not a major flaw, but I would say from a statistical angle, that is a little uh, funny. It is not really the thing to do. Uh, and finally, what I, I have a dis uh, disagreement with this. Uh, finally, what is their conclusion? They are concluding that we need a larger study. So what prevented them from doing a larger study? So they have calculated the sample size, recruited patients and done a study. So they should have the, had enough patients to fi finally say something or other, isn't it? So yes, it is not very nice to go on saying that, you know, we have no conclusion. I mean, it's all, all right in an observational study, but when you do an experiment, you should be sharper and you should try to find an answer rather than, of course, you may have your limitations. You may not get enough patients, then you could say that, but then, uh, I, I don't think they have said any of those things, but uh, I think that is also a problem with the way it has been written up. So I'm not saying it's a bad study, but uh, there are issues and uh, this is my take on that. Uh, sir, uh, sir, one doubt, sir. Uh, sir was telling that uh, um, uh, regarding the primary objective, uh, because uh, the control group and the study group there, uh, other than this migration sulfate, uh, all the other treatment was the same. It is, isn't like that, uh, Dr. Shamim. Can yes. you contribute? Yes, sir. So is that significant, sir? Because uh, even though they have not mentioned uh, regarding the improvement with the magnesium sulfate nebulization, uh, in the study conduct, uh, the description of the study, they have mentioned that uh, they all accept magnesium sulfate. Uh, they are, the both groups were given the same treatment. Is that uh, significant, sir? I mean, can that be taken or is the point that uh, it should be main, mentioned in the objective? Is that the point, sir? No, my point about the objective is the way it is worded. Sir, sir. What is the objective of the study? Ah, okay. What is the objective of the study? The stu ob study objective is to understand whether the drug is effective. So they have not said that. They have said the objective is to improve RDI score, which is not our ob objective at all. Sir, understand. You understand that point? <laughs> Got it, sir. Got it, sir. And I am very surprised that the reviewer also missed this. I mean, so it's may not, maybe a minor point, but I would have certainly pointed it out. Sir, in this study, they have concluded that uh, uh, adrenal nebulization is, I mean, uh, magnesium sulfate nebulization uh, will improve, uh, is useful in uh, bronchiolitis, uh, sir. So can that be taken as a, um, uh, I mean, regarding the generalizability and all, uh, could be, can we take that uh, into daily practice and all? It's based on such studies, uh, which concludes like that, can we uh, 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 adopt that to daily uh, management? <laughs> that I don't know. You are the better judge. Uh, I would say that the study pro, uh, kind of points to the fact that it is useful. I mean, that is what I take sure. from this because they have, they have done it on so many patients and they have found that there is improvement. So obviously it is yes. useful. 
Uh, but then why they themselves had a doubt, I don't know. Finally, they have said you still have to do more studies. Yes, sir. I understood. Sir. That is like like a, taking an anticipatory bail. Yes. <laughs> it's just not necessary. That's all I'm saying. Thank you so much, sir. Um, um, uh, Patnav, sir. Sir, are you, you are muted, sir. Sir. See, I raised the same points when we had the trial run also. I raised it again, the same thing, because there are some other people also, I hope, who have joined here. 33 people are there. Number one, the main problems in the study of all bronchiolitis is the definition. The definition is that if you, in the American continent, it is defined as the first attack of wheeze. Therefore, you can understand, but probably bronchodilators like magnesium sulfate may have a role. But if you look at the definition from the uh, from the European continent and mainly UK, they would say that it is an uh, upper respiratory tract infection in which the child develops tachypnea, infant develops tachypnea, and on escalation there are crepitations. They don't talk of wheeze because once it is wheeze, it means there is bronchospasm. And according to the Britishers, the problem is bronchial bronchiolar problem in bronchiolitis. There is no bronchospasm, I like asthma. And uh, therefore, that is the definition. Therefore, you know, if you have, go by the definition of uh, UK, then there is no power, place for a bronchodilator. But here they have used American, they have said that we go by the American guideline. They have not said what is exactly, how did they define bronchiolitis? See, bronchiolitis at the end of the day is a clinical diagnosis. It's a well child infant. And up to Americans, it is up to two years. So here they have included only up to one year. So that's, they have gone against the American definition, I think. And then uh, it is, uh, I mean, uh, it's a well child who develops uh, rapid breathing. Therefore, here they have said we excluded seizures, we excluded sick children. We excluded children. I don't know how it at all comes under the definition of a bronchiolitis. That's one thing. The other thing that I I know I want Ramanguti to answer here. They say all the children recovered, both in the control group as well as in the treatment group recovered. And the general concept of bronchiolitis is it's a self-limiting disorder, which uh, therefore they say to do less is to do more. That's the that is other than oxygenation and other than hydration, nothing should be done. If the child is taking feeds well, SpO2 is more than 92 in room air, don't intervene. The intervention creates the problem for the patient. Here, yeah, that is more or less proved by showing that it's all the children improved in the control group as well as in the treatment group. Only thing is it took a little more time probably in the control group. But does it uh, give us the right to intervene? That's my question to Ramagutti. And, uh, and another thing is, I would like to ask him specifically, whenever something is useful, we expect it to be useful in the most severe types of it, is it not? Here, yeah, the, the more severity, the better will be the difference between the control and the... That's my thinking. I don't know. Here, statistically, RDW, RD, what is it, RDA, about 10, there is no effect. RDA below 10, there is effect. That means the more severe, the magnesium sulfate is not having effect. If I am wondering whether uh, that can, that is, uh, it doesn't uh, look logical to me. Therefore, I think there's a classical case in which there is statistically significance, but there is no clinical significance. Am I right? I'm a good uh, yeah, I would agree with you. I, you know, actually, I also thought why uh, there is not much of I mean, even though there is a statistical difference between the two groups, actually in terms of outcome, there is not much difference. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe I thought that, you know, because I'm not uh, fam very familiar with the clinical situation, there may be some mean, but uh, it looks like what, is, what that is true. Definitely, uh, I think they have done a trial for, uh, I don't know, for nothing because uh, they have, all the children improved and only thing is uh, the first, the one group improved a little bit quicker than the other, which may not actually matter in the long run. So, uh, and also the other point that you pointed out is very relevant. In the severe cases, probably it is less effective, which means that that is uh, more like, a, I don't know, it's not really the efficacy of the drug, but 
but statistically it shows that there is a difference so it cannot be translated into and with all that they are still saying that you need to do more studies which is actually that is very much uh, not uh, uh, i would say even unethical because what you have seen is that it's, it's really everybody every child is improving so even with uh, control okay so i agree with that. i mean i agree with what patnavan's points okay sir okay i would like to uh, sir uh, i would like uh, i would like to request dr ladha kalesh madam to uh, share madam's thought regarding the uh, discussion that is going on here madam okay right i don't think i have much to add uh, no other than what uh, patnavan and uh, dr ramamurthy had told i totally yeah. agree with patnavan in the sense that most of the bronchiolitis we know that we don't have much to do other than the supportive management yes ma'am even say uh, saline nebulization and even an adrenal nebulization we try one or once or twice the nebulization and if the child improves only we continue otherwise just other supportive measures yes. so i think with my to moderate cases the magnesium sulfate is also definitely same as shown in the study that is as the clinician in me the search part i think they have discussed in detail that's all thank you so much madam uh dr ekha madam uh, anything to contribute madam anything to uh, add dr krish uh, dr krishnamurthy sir wants to talk something he is asked in the chat box oh. i think sir should give a chance dr krishnamurthy sir can you please unmute and uh, yes sir thank you sir hello hello yes, hi everyone yes, as a as a person who had delivered a, a content talk on bronchiolitis i strongly hold on to the views that dr patmanabhan has expressed bronchiolitis by definition does not involve bronchospasm and bronchodilators are absolutely contraindicated according to most uh, uk studies and so i don't even look at i don't even think that adrenaline adrenaline has been contraindicated that is what uh, the uh, the guidelines say and in a magnesium sulfate is used as a rescue therapy for children who are severely sick with bronchospasm needing icu admission and that is not the type of patients that we have seen in this study therefore with that small numbers of 52 patients in control group and study group and uh, you know seeing children who are not that sick i don't think that the conclusions are justified in this study that's my personal opinion and the bronchodilators obviously are not indicated thank you sir thank you sir that was very i mean uh, Yeah, I have to unmute mute a few persons. Now, um, Dr. Ekhan, madam, do you have anything to contribute as a, a mentor of the program and all? So, mentor, I'd like to thank first of all the organizers for this opportunity for the PGs. It was uh, the study. We agree. It was brave of us to take an area of controversy because uh, magnesium sulfate. We also agree. that uh, because of uh, the wrong it was not uh, we were also very not very convinced of the treatment part but the study uh, it seemed like yeah. a very simple study to study the randomized controlled trial that is why it was chosen and as sir uh, amguti sir rightly pointed out the primary objective which china mentioned in usually when we do a study it's in a question format but here it was rather a statement that there will is an improvement of an rda that is why we also pointed out that as a negative effect um uh, 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 regarding and then regarding the RTI subgrouping, sir, we we felt that that was what made this study different from the other studies because the other studies have not taken into consideration whether the moderate or the severe. There are quite a few studies, but none of them have taken into consideration whether it is a moderate, mild to moderate bronchiolitis or a severe bronchiolitis. So this rightly proved out that magnesium sulfate does not have much of an effect in a severe bronchiolitis. uh even the cochrane reviews uh, there are cochrane reviews on the same uh, topic and they also all the studies are, are just uh, done a random and the conclusion has not it has not been conclusive and uh, magnesium sulfate because uh, it is a bronchodilator and how far a bronchodilator would be useful in a bronchiolitis is, is always a the end point was never a good conclusion so um, i hope the pgs have uh, we have been able to do justice to the analysis and thank you once again for the opportunity i just i'd like to thank lalita kailas madam and shaki sir for guiding us from behind and the pgs for their effort thank you sir thank you uh, patna sir uh, I, before uh, i been uh, we conclude actually 
uh, we would like to uh, entertain uh, questions for discussion as well as uh, points in common which is which will be useful and relevant to this so i request anybody if you feels if they feel that uh, they should talk and uh, kindly unmute and uh, contribute you are requesting see i just want to point out another Sorry. thing why we are not interested in uh, uh, too many things is what i find distressing many times is bronchiolitis is a condition which generally 95% will recover especially in our places and uh, to, to do less is to do more that's what they say now here many people start intervening like giving nebulized hypertonic saline three hourly saline salbutamol the child who who would better recover with rest with sleep maybe a little sp oxygen and maybe a little hydration if required this given two hourly nebulizer two hourly this one because that actually we do more harm than good i feel at times and uh, especially the junior pediatricians who just come out of training they are very aggressive they don't realize that this is not asthma this is not asthma in which we should uh, intervene like that that's my only point even hypertonic saline they say even if you want to give you give three doses at the beginning if there is no improvement don't give it any further but uh, hypertonic saline is given as if it is the final treatment somehow that is what i find that the uh, junior consultants who come to my hospital believe that but that's only thing i would like to say and uh, i don't know whether ramanguti would agree this is a classical study in which there is statistical significance but whether you should change the treatment it depends on so many other factors i would definitely not give magnesium sir definitely not Yeah, so did you must... say that there are conditions in which there could be clinical significance well that done study design is good everything is good but still you should not change the management do you think that there will be something like that no no i agree with you but i think what i that's what i tried to point out but i had not done the calculation but see the way they have analyzed is also not uh, proper because they should have taken into consideration the time effect to so look at the time effect you know it's very parallel both of them are going uh, and i don't know whether they did the right thing but uh, that will take a long that's why i didn't discuss that uh, so that is a very good point i mean it is uh, even though they they have produced some p values what is the meaning of those p values is open to question but what is uh, actually listening to the clinicians here i am all the more surprised that uh, this study went through the ethics committee because uh, you know whenever an i sit in so many ethics committees so one of the first things they say is that children uh, there are groups which are considered very vulnerable and small children are especially vulnerable so if uh, when such a study comes up they should have asked the opinion of a practicing pediatrician whether you should do the study or not and i am sure that if people like you were consulted they would have said that you know it's not a very advisable study so even from a good center such things happen i don't know This is not PGI. This is not PGI Chandigarh. Oh, it's not PGI. It's something else. Some other study is placed in Chandigarh. Okay, I think. Sir, if there are no other questions, can we call today or we'll conclude? Yeah, I think later. we have. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, okay. Um, since there are no other questions, I mean we have. Uh, experience a great i mean a session as far as general club is concerned because as rekha madam is telling the idea is not to i mean uh, present only the best journals we'll have to uh, bless the articles actually we'll have to when we see these attractive uh, titles catchy titles and all we should be knowing uh, we should be we should know how to analyze and whether and to uh, to assess the strength of the study and uh, and uh, how to translate that into clinical practice and all so there is a whole idea of this uh, journal club how to analyze and understand and for that uh, we had an excellent uh, i mean analysis by dr ramguti sir and we thank you for so for your uh, valuable time sir and uh, dr lalita kalas madam uh, madam as here uh, since the beginning and all thank you so much for madam uh, for being here with us for sharing your thoughts and allowing uh, the great faculty and the pgs to have this excellent presentation and i would like to thank dr rekha madam uh, dr shamim and dr shaina 
and uh, dr patnavan sir and uh, dr joni sir was here but uh, sir has left i think krishnamurthy to for coming in krishnamurthy yeah. is an examiner in mrcp yes, a very experienced heard... person from uk yes, sir is a very important person like yeah. thank you for joining krishnamurthy sir and uh, i think uh, rubini madam has also joined rubini madam uh, yeah, I, mean... i am here uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, due to personal reasons i was a little be late in joining uh thank you all thank you very much ah thank you madam so uh, okay. and i would also like to thank all my, uh, my teachers uh, senior faculties colleagues and uh, friends rosemary is there and uh, many uh, i mean uh, practicing pediatricians are there so uh, thanks all for joining uh, with us and uh, till the next time we meet in the journal club it is um, goodbye from us and have a great time thank you and good night thanks